I'm sure we're all familiar with Gorilla Tag, and if that's true, then I don't doubt you've watched some content about the game as well. Whether this comes from J-Man Curly, K9, or J-Man Curly's friend, no matter who is posting the video, it's normally only the Gorilla Tag videos that you watch, and they're all aware of this, so when they want to experiment with content, especially when the game they want to play is more obscure and less known than the main game they play, Gorilla Tag, they have the idea to spoon feed it to their audience. For example, J-Man Curly uploaded a video called If Gorilla Tag Was Violent. This has Gorilla Tag in the title, Gorilla Tag in the thumbnail, so surely this is a Gorilla Tag video, right? Well, let's check it out. And you're probably thinking, wait, what's this game? Well, this is a game called No More Rainbows, and it kind of got the short end of the stick when it came to content creation. And it isn't just this game, but that's for later in the video. Why is this the thing? Well, let's begin. No More Rainbows brings the fun of a classic platformer to VR. Use the intuitive locomotion mechanics to run, jump, and climb using only your hands. As the warden of the underworld, you've been awoken from your eternal slumber by the sound of horribly joyful melodies piercing the warm darkness. No More Rainbows is one of the only semi-storyline VR games that actually manages to do it good. You play as the beast of the underworld and destroy the reversed version of your world giving the name No More Rainbows. Killing enough little rainbow guys makes it so you can unlock new levels, with each level at the end being a boss battle. This was confusing as when I first heard of this game I was wondering how people were relating this to Gorilla Tag because Gorilla Tag is just a version of glorified tag so how did these two fall under the same community? Well if you are paying attention to the gameplay on screen you can see that both Gorilla Tag and No More Rainbows have the same locomotion as each other. This game mechanic doesn't actually have an official name, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to be referring to it as monkey movement, a method of locomotion in which bipedal movement is achieved through the upper extremities. It's common knowledge that Gorilla Tag came up with it first, but there are a few people that believe otherwise. Even an actual moderator of No More Rainbows said that they came up with it first, but there's a lot of factors that you have to take into account that I don't really know as of now, but that's besides the point. Seeing that they have basically the exact same movement, they can sort of shift share a fan base even if they have nothing in common, but does this give an excuse for Gorilla Tag creators to give their playthroughs a completely different name? Well, I'll talk about that after we figure out why content creators do this. What's the reason? Let's take a moment to consider something pretty obvious. When you visit a YouTube channel known for playing Gorilla Tag like J-Man's, you'll notice a trend. Videos that stray away from Gorilla Tag tend to perform worse. It's not rocket science, but when a YouTuber's fanbase is built around one game, in J-Man Curly's case it would be Gorilla Tag, it's only natural that they stick to what their audience loves. It's a straightforward choice, why risk making a video that might flop when you can stick to what you already know will do well? Now here's where it gets interesting, despite the predictable pattern of Gorilla Tag videos dominating J-Man Curly's channel, every now and then he throws in a video about a lesser known game called No More Rainbows. Surprisingly, these No More Rainbows videos pull in just as many views as the Gorilla Tag ones. It's like a rinse and repeat cycle. Okay, I'm gonna try something. Look, here's a Gorilla Tag video. Now here's a No More Rainbows video. Now here's a Gorilla Tag video. And now here's a No More Rainbows video. Now for the final time, here's a Gorilla Tag video and here's a No More Rainbows video. Basically the same, right? Well, you wanna know the best part? They were all No More Rainbows videos. Yeah, a small game that only got fully released a little over a year ago is pulling hundreds of thousands, if not millions of views per upload. Now, you might be wondering, if these creators are bringing in so many views for No More Rainbows, how could this possibly be a bad thing? Well, that's where things get a little bit tricky. To understand why this could be problematic for No More Rainbows, we're gonna need to dig a bit deeper. But it's not just about the views, there's more to the story, and it's worth exploring why this newfound popularity might not just be all sunshines and rainbows for the game itself. Before I answer this question referring to No More Rainbows, I want to tell you guys a small story about a game called Heartbound. This game was made by a small American indie developer named Pirate Software. Now this game was pretty small, it didn't have a very large community or even a very supportive team behind it. But Pirate was open on his website about the fact that his game was heavily inspired by a very large game I'm sure we're all familiar with, Undertale. And if you watch videos of Heartbound or even play the game yourself, you can see the similarities. But they're both pretty different in their own ways, so does this sound familiar? Well, to add on to that suspicion, a very famous YouTuber, Matt Pat, the guy who runs the channel The Game Theorist, played through Heartbound on his live streaming account, GT Live. And the title for the live stream was letting you guys know that the next Undertale game is here. This topic was already covered by a YouTuber named Treesicle, and I'm gonna play a clip from his video where he talks more about the title, because the title of the original live stream has now been changed to something more relevant to the stream. So here it is. Now, here's the thing. I watched through the whole stream, and the stream itself does not 
come across as an Undertale mashup. But the original title, The Next Undertale Game Is Here, is deceptive. I can absolutely see why the developers would be upset over that title. A less clickbaity title definitely would have been preferred. Even one like The Next Undertale Is Here would have been better. It would have given the impression it's like Undertale, but isn't in the same franchise, and isn't made by the same creator. Now, this is sounding exactly like the situation that No More Rainbows is in right now. And as a result of what MatPat did with his video, Heartbound didn't perform nearly as good as expected. And obviously nowhere near to how good Undertale performed. This made Pirate pretty pissed, and he made a few statements calling out and blaming MatPat for affecting the growth of his game. To be honest, this drama honestly isn't very interesting. Pirate software comes across really entitled more and more with everything he said. But I'll leave a link to Treesicle's video in the description that talks about this aspect in more detail. Anyways, what I'm trying to say is that something like this has happened before. Heartbound was a blatant copy of Undertale, and I don't blame MatPat for doing that, but No More Rainbows in my eyes are still innocent, because the only other thing it shares to the superior game is the movement. That's like if Heartbound was a completely different game from Undertale, but it was just another top scroller. Sure, it would look somewhat similar, but the games would be polar opposites. I'm sure if that was the case, the drama would have got a lot more attention. The audience of Gorilla Tag and No More Rainbows are leaning towards the younger side, so both fan bases don't really mind, let alone notice it's happening at all. As a result of this, No More Rainbows are forced to suffer in silence. All these content creators always use the biggest game at the time, which fails to provide the smaller, more interesting game with a supportive fanbase. It'll always be known as a copy or an alternative. If this keeps going on, there leaves no room for any other games to come into circulation. Are the views worth it? I don't know, but I think it'd be good if we spoke about how this can be fixed in a way that's best for everyone. So let's talk. Well, unfortunately, I do believe No More Rainbows might be too far gone. I find it hard that all of a sudden it'll become known for its boss battles or attention to detail. But this is okay. This entire situation can be used as another example, just like Heartbound. Maybe in a few years after this community shook off this burden, someone will make a video on the same topic and use No More Rainbows to show how this trend affected such great games. Then, referring to Gorilla Tag creators, obviously doing this is completely up to you, and when I take the game you guys play on your accounts into account, I can see why only playing Gorilla Tag can get difficult. Take it from me, I spent over a year making Gorilla Tag videos on TikTok, and I can't lie, figuring out interesting things to do in Gorilla Tag is really draining, as the game doesn't really have much content. But it has a really large, supportive, and dedicated fanbase, so the reward when you do make a good video is more than the average attention you'd get from any other VR game on YouTube. Now, referring to content creators in general, there's really only one question that needs to be asked, and that's, are the views worth it? I hope pointing this out and bringing more light to the subject makes you, the viewer, understand the problem a little bit better. No disrespect to J-Man or any other content creators I mentioned in this video, I was just using your channels as examples, nothing malicious. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. If you don't want to do that, please leave a like, it's free and I would really appreciate it. Thank you for watching.